Hello dear students, welcome to the lecture one of responsive web design with ASP.NET 5 and MVC pattern and Bootstrap 5. Uh, so uh, uh, we will uh, proceed this course with uh, using C# -sharp language, programming language, and uh, Microsoft SQL uh, Server. So what you need for this uh, course is uh, Visual Studio Community Edition uh, with installing uh, C# -sharp and uh, ASP.NET. You have to install them, and uh, also you need to install uh, Microsoft SQL uh, Developer Edition and uh, Microsoft SQL Management Studio. Okay. Uh, so if you install these, uh, you will be able to uh, follow the course uh, as I progress. Uh, so in this course, uh, we will be using our uh, GitHub repository uh, that I have composed for this year's uh, course, Responsive Web Design with ASP.NET 5 and MVC pattern. Uh, here the URL. Uh, you will. I will also put this URL into the uh, description of, of video. Also, you can type uh, Furkan Gozukara for GitHub and from repositories. Uh, you can find the repository from there as well. Uh, so here my Visual Studio, it is installed. Uh, uh, actually, we will be using uh, ASP.NET Core. However, it is named as ASP.NET uh, after certain update. Uh, we will be using uh, version 5. Okay, so what else uh, to be said? So let's uh, start with uh, initial, initializing our uh, repository. Okay, and okay, what is the folder name? Okay, here you see it is empty right now. I will initialize it. Git at remote origin, if I remember correctly. Okay, maybe like this. Yes, I have added our repository and now I will synchronize my folder. Okay, uh, now we have synchronized uh, folders uh, for our uh, course material here and also I will add git ignore file as well and the another uh, folder that I will be using okay let's name it as okay let's start so uh, I will start with composing a new uh, project uh, and let's search for our project template. Okay, you see there is ASP.NET Core Web Application and ASP.NET Web Application .NET Framework. Uh, they have named the .NET Core as .NET in uh, C Sharp VPF application, as you can see here. Uh, this is .NET Core, and this is the older .NET Framework. However, it appears that ASP.NET Core is still named as .NET Core, therefore do not use ASP.NET Web Application. Use ASP.NET Web Core Web Application and then we will select the MVC. You see here it is showing there. Uh, so this is the uh, project template that we will be using for this course. Okay, and let's pick our uh, folder. Okay, here and uh, let's give the project name lecture one okay uh, for this course I will be using the tutorials uh, on the uh, internet uh, because they are extremely useful I think the good one was 
let me find a good tutorial we will check every one of them pretty much but okay this one was a pretty good one okay uh, so asp.mvctutorial.com and okay you see now it is telling us to pick the version we will be using asp.net core 5 latest version and you see we can also pick the uh, framework type here .net core or .web framework uh, if you wonder the difference between .net core and .net framework .net core can work on uh, other platforms as well such as Li uh, linux mac os and such so there is empty api web application web application model view controller and such okay let's continue with the tutorial i think it was composing an empty one okay let's continue so let's start with what is mvc okay MVC, short for Model View Controller, is a software pattern originally developed in the 1970s when graphical user interfaces were in the very early phases of development. MVC strives to separate an application into three areas. Okay, so MVC is a Model View Controller and it is a design pattern that can be applied to uh, all object-oriented programming uh, languages. Uh, so there are the model. Okay, so let's read the model. This is where data and business logic is stored. In a typical web application, this part of the application would represent e.g. a database table or any other object that your application should deal with. And then there is view. The view is the actual visual representation of your model. In a typical web application, this would be the page that shows your model to the user, whether it be a form for inputting the data or an output of the data or a combination of both. Obviously, a view doesn't have to show all parts of the model, and a model can have more than one view. And then the controller. Okay, let's read the controller as well. The controller should handle all communication between your model and your view. In a typical web application, the methods of the controller are invoked by the user when a page is loaded or a button is clicked. The controller then updates the model, if necessary, and then returns a new view or action, but more about that later, if necessary. So we separate our uh, design into three uh, layers. The model, where we handle the data, such as we, con we contact to the database, and modify modify update select insert delete the data and then we have the view we, where we show uh, the data to the uh, user uh, it is about graphical user interface and then we have the controller where uh, the communication between model and view is made uh, the user controls the uh, uh, our application uh, so this can be applied to any uh, any uh, programming languages that supports it. Uh, for example, if we give an example uh, on Android mobile application development, you can use the same model uh, in a in an Android application and in a uh, web application. Okay, because it is the background thing. What would change is the view and the controller would change according to the platform you are developing. So. This can make our job much, much easier if you are developing multi-platform applications. Also, this is the future of the development, uh, let's say, uh, philosophy, maybe we can call as that. Uh, so, MVC is the uh, model uh, the, uh, and design uh, approach that you should follow uh, in your professional life. So the rise of the MVC is as After being introduced in the 1970s, the MVC pattern didn't get much attention for the next 30 years. Early web languages, like Perl, PHP and ASP Classic didn't really focus on design patterns and even with the release of ASP.NET, MVC was still not an integrated part of it. Sure, you could apply MVC techniques to your projects, but none of the popular frameworks encouraged it in any way. Okay, then...
Then, in 2004, the Ruby on Rails framework was released, which was a web development framework based on the Ruby language with heavy inspiration from the MVC pattern. A lot of people believe that this put the focus back on MVC and shortly thereafter, many PHP frameworks, centered around the MVC pattern, was released. All of this made the MVC pattern hugely popular, which is probably why Microsoft decided to do an implementation of it for their .NET framework, including massive tool support in their Visual Studio IDE. ASP.NET MVC was released in 2007, but the first final version didn't see the light of day before 2009. In the next chapters, we will look deeper into what ASP.NET MVC is all about and how it compares to the alternatives, mainly ASP.NET web forms. Okay, to be frank, uh, I have developed my applications uh, so far in ASP.NET web forms because I didn't have the enough technical knowledge and experience when I first started my web-based applications, uh, web-based games actually. However, uh, I am so uh, much regretting that I didn't use the MVC pattern in my development because if I had used it, I could uh, also made uh, another platform application for my web-based games with a very little amount of work. Okay, so what is ASP.NET MVC? We previously talked about MVC in general, but in this chapter, we will be focusing on using the MVC pattern for building ASP.NET MVC web applications. Microsoft introduced ASP.NET MVC in 2007, with the first stable release being available in 2009. It's worth noting that the MVC implementation is actually open source. Microsoft has released the entire MVC framework under the Apache License 2.0, which allows you to view and modify the framework and even redistribute your changes. Okay, so you see it is open source, and open source means that it has a feature. Why? Uh, because everyone can contribute and uh, it will progress much faster than a closed source code application and uh, I think it is better uh, it to be an open source. So the ASP.NET MVC Weave Engine ASP.NET MVC was originally constructed to use web forms, the original ASP.NET technology, as its views, but in later versions, it has been made possible to easily change the view engine used by ASP.NET MVC to use custom built engines and Microsoft even developed one, called Razor, which was released together with ASP.NET MVC version 3 in 2011. Today, Razor is the most commonly used view engine, but besides web forms, several alternative engines have been developed by the community, like Braille, Njango, Sharp Tiles and many more. In this tutorial, we will focus on the Razor view engine because it's really good and easy to get started with. Yes, I would also say that the Razor engine is one of the best. Uh, so, we will be using Razor engine, it is a good one, and let's continue. So. What is the core part? You see, we could use ASP.NET uh, Framework or ASP.NET Core. Uh, so let's uh, read about more information about Core. You have probably already noticed that this tutorial is called the ASP.NET MVC Core Tutorial, but why Core? The original .NET framework, along with ASP.NET components, was originally released as a closed source framework in 2002. Later on, Microsoft decided that they wanted to create an open source .NET framework with support for the major operating systems, Windows, OS X and Linux. They called this the .NET Core Framework and it was released in 2016, followed by many rapid releases with lots of improvements. Uh, after the release of .NET Core, the rise of uh, C Sharp and .NET uh, has uh, dramatically increased. Uh, it has uh, caused a hype in the development uh, community. Uh, it has definitely give a life to the .NET uh, programming languages. So I think that Microsoft did the correct thing. 
Today, the .NET Core framework is just as stable as the original .NET framework and besides compatibility with more operating systems it also comes with much better performance and a faster release cycle, meaning that you will get access to bug fixes and new features faster than with the original .NET framework. So, unless you need legacy functionality found only in the original .NET framework, you should always go with the .NET Core version. This is so true, uh, because basically there is uh, almost no differences between .NET Framework programming and .NET Core programming. Therefore, why not use the latest technology? Why not use the technology of the future? Okay, so... Summary now that you know a bit more about MVC and the .NET flavor of it, move on to the next article so we can discuss how ASP.NET MVC stack up to the original ASP.NET View Engine, ASP.NET Web Forms. Okay, let's uh, continue. So, ASP.NET MVC versus Web Forms. Okay. Uh, as I said, I have a great knowledge and experience on Web Forms uh, because I have developed my... Um, uh, license thesis with them uh, and there are two games that I have been developing so, for example the major one is Monster MMORPG this is a web, ba web forms based uh, development ASP.NET and I have written probably over 1 million lines of code so far in uh, 11 years actually 12 years now almost I have been developing since 2009 yes you see correctly and so I have great experience and knowledge in web forms but I can say that uh, the .NET Core MVC is much better believe me uh, so you should always go with ASP.NET MVC web uh, form um, ASP.NET MVC uh, and Razor pages if you are going to develop a web application I can say that this is the best programming language for now at the moment for developing web applications um, so the game has so many features uh, if you log in uh, register and login you can uh, check them out if you want anyway let's co continue to our uh, subject The first version of ASP.NET was released in 2002, with the Web Forms View Engine being the only choice available. Later on, to support stuff like MVC, Microsoft has extended ASP.NET to support multiple view engines, but for many years, if you were using ASP.NET you were also automatically using Web Forms. Microsoft had a very commendable goal when they created web forms, they wanted to abstract as much of the gritty details of the HTTP protocol and the stateless nature of it away and make web development feel much more like developing a Windows application, which was already a pretty pleasant experience at the time. They did so by introducing the view state, which would make sure that the current state of any form was preserved during postbacks to the server and they did it with server controls, which encapsulated the rendering of HTML and CSS into an arbitrary control which you could customize using logical properties instead of being forced to mix HTML and CSS directly. They also introduced the event-driven model, already known to the Windows developers at that time, to allow the developer to respond to actual events, like a button being clicked or a checkbox being changed, instead of doing manual checks for this each time the page was loaded. This also meant that markup and code was separated, which in theory is a great thing. Okay, where web forms fail it? Web Forms was a fresh breath of air for many developers, and it likely also helped a lot of new developers, or developers only familiar with Windows application development, to learn building applications for the web. Unfortunately Microsoft didn't succeed in creating the perfect and flawless abstraction, because a number of problems quickly emerged. Some of them were fixed in later releases, while others were more fundamental to the way Web Forms worked and therefore harder to change. The web forms technology has been criticized mainly for the following things. Okay, view state makes pages heavier. This is so true. Uh, I will show you what does this mean in my uh, web forms based application. So, 
when we open the monster dex page with ha which has a lot of uh, let's say uh, features uh, we can see the uh, wave state of the uh, page okay when i open uh, the head uh, i think it was somewhere here um, one moment not head but okay inside the form okay here uh, you see there is a div class asp.net hidden and inside here you will see the weave state you see how many weave states there are you see like there are uh, 82 weave states and all of these text is sent to the server and get back each time you make a request to the server can you imagine how much uh, overload it is adding to the application from network view let me show you so let's say i want to uh, filter by a name and when i click this now we will see the post okay here is the post and let's see uh, what have been posted and what we did, uh, we did get so the form data you see uh, we have posted all these weave states and uh, here we have got all this as a uh, uh, response and inside the response i think we can see the weave state somewhere <clears throat> okay here at the bottom it is a very long weave state you see so this is the uh, maybe the worst part of the uh, asp.net web forms okay it increases your overload a lot uh, and it slows down of course the application and let's see the uh, post data size and the response data size okay so the content length is uh, 47 kilobytes okay just for doing an action uh, i am sending 47 kilobytes and maybe we can see better from here uh, the post okay so you see the transferred over network size is uh, 80 kilobyte. It is huge uh, to just do an action. And this is the worst part of uh, web forms. By keeping track of every server control on the page in a view state string, which is sent back and forth between the server on each request, web forms pages got quite a bit heavier. If you were building a medium complex page, the resulting view state string could lead to an increase of several hundreds of kilobytes. This could lead to longer load times, especially on a mobile connection and with the increase of traffic from smartphones all over the world, this became a very real problem. Yes, this is a so true uh, sentiment. Uh, therefore, uh, we should avoid web forms if possible. Server controls limits your control over HTML output. Server controls makes it easy for you to quickly create something useful, but you never get full control of the HTML which it renders. This can become a problem when you need to fine tune your work as well as if you experience browser compatibility problems. Yes, this may be a problem, uh, but not that much. I think the worst problem is weave state. Also, when you depend on the uh, ISP.NET web forms provided uh, asynchronous uh, events, uh, you really increase the uh, back and forth sent data. That is the another worst part. 
uh, it is not lightweight as you are using ajax with like jquery or such or javascript itself and let's continue web forms is bad for automated testing the web forms model was introduced before automated unit testing became a big thing and when it did it was easy to see that web forms was hard if not impossible to effectively unit test uh, this is also true uh, because you don't separate uh, layers and therefore it is harder to do automated testing uh, as being layered uh, in the modern programming testing is alone a profession uh, companies are hiring testers uh, to test their applications between updates or before release and this is true let's continue where asp.net mvc is an improvement over web forms okay let's uh, read the advantages of asp.net mvc asp.net mvc removes a lot of the abstractions implemented by web forms for instance you usually generate all of the html yourself instead of relying on server controls there is also no longer any view state maintained for you effectively eliminating that problem but also rendering several of the server controls like the grid view and the repeater useless at the same time the mvc model is perfect for automated unit testing because of the loose coupling between the different layers okay so which technology should you choose of course asp.net mvc core but let's read it as well it's important to state that while web forms may seem like an outdated technology when reading the above it's actually not at all web forms is still being actively developed by microsoft and is still a possible choice when entering the world of web development with asp.net Web Forms is especially well suited for situations where you want something up and running in a hurry. The big amount of advanced server controls makes it easy to accomplish something very useful in a rush, at the price of the flexibility it gives you to write all the markup manually. Yes, it is true. If you are in a in a such hurry, you can use it. But I uh, strongly uh, say that don't use it because. After a certain point, it is impossible to change between applications. It's a too hard thing because, let's say, I decided to convert my uh, web forms application into ASP.NET MVC core. Then I have to do maybe thousands of tests, tests uh, total to make sure that application is working correctly. Because uh, when doing a programming. You cannot uh, prevent program to have bugs, exploits, or errors uh, before releasing it because it is almost impossible for a single person to uh, notice all of the bugs and fix them before releasing them. I have fixed hundreds of bugs, errors, maybe thousands uh, during in the 11 years, all by the logging uh, system that I have developed and from the uh, player base the user space uh, feedback uh, therefore converting an application is a huge task and huge waste of time so uh, choose uh, intelligently before starting your application uh, for therefore i am in this uh, course i am teaching the latest technology ASP.NET 5 and VC5 is the latest version and Bootstrap 5 is the latest version. Therefore, we are very up to date and we are going to learn the latest technology. I wish in my school I had learned it that way, but we didn't. If you already know how to use web forms, you should definitely give ASP.NET MVC a try, especially if some of the above mentioned problems have been bugging you as well. If you're new to web development and you need to decide between the two technologies, I would still recommend giving ASP.NET MVC a try. The MVC model can seem a bit restrictive to some people, and having to follow a pattern is obviously harder in the beginning than not following one, but once you get used to it, it's very pleasant to work with and judging from the amount of attention that the MVC model receives in general, it's not likely to disappear anytime soon.
Okay, so let's continue to tutorial. We have seen what is about MVC and what is about .NET Core. Okay, so we need Visual Studio Community Edition. As I said, it is installed. Latest version, latest updates are done. And we will be using .NET Core and ASP.NET Core 5, version 5. This is a very new version. And a previous year, for example, it, this wasn't available. Okay. If you have worked with programming languages or frameworks from Microsoft before, you probably already know Visual Studio. It's an IDE integrated development environment perfectly suited for working with .NET technologies like ASP.NET MVC and programming languages like C# -sharp and VB.NET. An IDE is an advanced editor where you can usually edit your code but also manage your projects, compile your code and so on. Okay, uh, here another thing, if you don't know programming, don't worry, in my, uh, in our uh, YouTube channel, which is SA Courses, uh, I have three uh, playlists, okay, so the first playlist you should start with is Introduction to Programming with C Sharp Full Course. Uh, this, uh, in this course you will learn how to do programming with C Sharp from beginning from uh, scratch then advanced programming with c sharp uh, which i have just started uploading the videos uh, so as per week each week i will upload and another video so hopefully to lecture one or okay and then finally there is uh, the third uh, course which is also completed uh, the previous semester is uh, object oriented programming with c sharp full course when you watch these uh, course lectures, you will have great uh, experience and knowledge about C# -sharp programming and in programming languages, how to do programming. Then it will be much easier for you to uh, follow our ASP.NET, MVC.NET core with Bootstrap uh, course. Okay, and let's continue. Yes, uh, so we need Visual Studio. Uh, you can download it from uh, visualstudio.com. And there is also Mac OS version as well. I think there is also uh, Linux version as well, but I am not sure. You can search for it. Okay, let's start our application. So uh, we will start with, uh, let's see. Uh, empty yes empty okay so you, so you see this tutorial is based on asp.net core version 3.51 which was available uh, previous year but this year there is newer version so we will continue with newer one so we are starting with an empty project here asp.net core project then i think we also uh, check the https Okay, we don't need this uh, HTTPS, uh, no need it. Okay, and okay, let's continue. Great. So our project is being composed right now. So you see, it is in C sharp, Linux, macOS, Windows, Cloud, Service Web. It works almost every platform that you can imagine. Oh, there is new update for my Visual Studio. I should do it. Probably it came today. Okay, so our project is composite. So you see we have program, CS program class. It is almost empty. And we have startup class. It is also almost empty. So in the startup class, uh, we, 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 we have routing. We have endpoints and which will write to the screen as hello world. Okay, let's continue with the tutorial. Okay, so let's change it as they're writing. 
okay so and then we have settings as json file and we have launch settings so you see they are automatically generated iss express is used and in the startup okay so what does this mean that this application will just return this response to the screen when we go to the root of the our isp.net core web application root means that there is no uh, pages just the root url when the application starts you will see so this is the root url uh, of our localhost application you can imagine it as www.google.com and there is no slash okay so we are seeing the message the response the response is written like as await context start response write asynchron hello mvc word uh, so the context is http http context response is the response and write asynchron is the asynchron okay so this method gets called by the runtime use this method to configure the http request pipeline so in this configuration we will configure our application start and other things we will see as we progress in the uh, tutorial and in our course so right now i am running in debug mode currently any cpu which means that my application is running as 32 bits okay we can also set it as uh, 64 bit which can increase our speed let's make it i will click nif and x64 okay now my application is 64 bit uh, to be able to use this of course your uh, windows has to be in 64 bit as well it should work i think okay let's uh, continue to next we are still in the getting start detection by the way okay it is working as expected i will stop the application okay now we will start with a uh, composing a controller what was about controller if you remember uh, let's read it and remember it in the last article, we created our very first ASP.NET MVC project. It had built-in functionality to display a simple message to the world, but we obviously want more than that. The first thing that would be relevant to add to your new, almost empty MVC model view controller project is a controller. As we talked briefly about earlier, the controller acts as the middleman, it will combine your model with a view and serve the result to the end user. However, neither a model nor a view is required, the controller can act on its own for the most basic operations, e.g. delivering a simple text message or redirecting the user to somewhere else. By the way, I want to mention another um, positive uh, feature of MVC model. You see, uh, in big projects, uh, there are uh, groups of developers developing uh, different layers, such as a group of developer develops the background code a group of developer develops the uh, user interface another one develops the controllers so you see mvc model lets you to have different teams totally independently working from each other if you are using web forms then uh, it is harder to separate teams uh, as easy as in asp.net mvc core uh, ASP.NET uh, MVC because with MVC pattern you are able to separate development into the very distinct layers and it is much easier to have different teams for each layer okay so this is another great uh, advantage of MVC pattern development However, there are a few things we need to do before adding a new controller to our project. Adding MVC support to a web project. Okay, so by default, our application is not supporting MVC pattern. Okay, so first we will add the MVC pattern uh, functionality to our project. 
In the previous article, we created a new web project using an empty template. This leaves us with a very basic web application, so we need to add MVC support to it, to let the .NET framework and the web server know how to process incoming requests etc. Remember the startup.cs file which we modified in the previous article? It's time to open it up again in Visual Studio and look for the configure services method. It's currently empty, but let's change that by adding the following line to it. So here you see we have configure services uh, method, uh, which is being called at the startup of the uh, application as from the name you can see. Uh, so in ASP.NET Core MVC, the startup CS and program CS are extremely important. Their names is extremely important because it is how the application gets uh, started. So we add services, services at MVC method call to our uh, application. So you see services is already coming from uh, our uh, framework. Okay. So yes, we have made it. We also need to let's read it. We also need to modify the configure method. Previously, it contained some code to output our hello MVC world message, but we want our new controller to handle this task in the future. Your web application needs to know how to map incoming requests to your controllers and for this, it uses the concept of routes. We will talk a lot more about routing later on, because it's a slightly complex subject, but for now, we will use a couple of lines of code, found at the bottom of the below code example, to add default routing to the application. So, modify your configure method in the startup.cs file so that it looks like this. Okay, so, uh, it is about how to get the pages, how does the engine uh, resolve the URL path into the uh, which page uh, it is okay so I will just copy and page so what is change it the change it thing is actually only uh, up use endpoints okay here let me copy paste it so we are removing this up endpoints map get to map default controller root okay so this is the method call from endpoints and endpoint is from microsoft asp.net core routing i i endpoint router builder and we call this method so if you wonder what this method is doing at you see in the description adds endpoints for controller actions to the Microsoft ASP.NET Core routing I endpoint router builder and adds the default route. So the default route is something like this. You see controller home action index and ID. Okay, let's continue. Now we are finally ready to add our first controller. We haven't added a controller yet. We are still at the setup adding a controller. The project structure of an MVC application is up to you. You can place all the controllers, models, views and other files in the root if you want to. However, it's usually a good idea to split things up in relevant folders, e.g. a controllers folder for your controllers, a views folder for your views and so on. Once you get used to a certain structure, whether it's a common one or one you have made up yourself, you will find it a lot easier to navigate your project and work with the files. Also putting these files into the uh, these way uh, name it folders makes your job easier because by default .NET framework looks for certain paths under certain folders. Therefore, you should follow this pattern. Uh, so let's add a controllers folder to our project. Uh, I click the lecture one, right click, and I click add folder controllers. Okay, it is done. Then we will add our first controller as add new item and and we see controller empty. Okay, so we will name it as home controller. By the way, this naming is important because by default the asp.net core will look for home controllers if you name it differently it won't work 
I will show you that. So I right click the folder and you see controllers, right click, add controller. So MVC controller empty, edit. I will name it as home controller CS. You see it is already named like that by default. Okay. Edit. Okay, home controller is added. So you see now it calls it has a, a method, public method as returning type is I action result and the name is index and it return a weave. Okay. So weave is also uh, a method of controller class. Okay, so it is added. As you can see, it looks like a regular C sharp class. It inherits the controller class, which is how the .NET frameworks know that this class is to be treated as an MVC controller. It has one method called index, which will try to return the default view by calling the view method. The .NET framework will be able to find the proper view, if it exists, in one of the many places that it automatically looks for views. However, we have not reached the part of the tutorial where views are introduced, so let's instead change the method to return the, now famous, hello, MVC world, message. Change the single line of the method so that it now looks like this. Okay, so since we didn't add any views to our uh, MVC uh, application yet, we are commenting this out and we are returning a content instead of a view. Okay. And let's continue. Uh, so now uh, our startup will route to default controller and default controller will check the home controller and home controller by default will check the index. So what does that mean? That means that when we open our application, the index um, action will be uh, call it in the default URL. Okay, let's see it. Okay, it is working as expected and we can also type like this, I think, but not sure. Oh, can't yet. So we, since we didn't add the proper routing, it only works like this so far. Okay. So this is a working default uh, due to default routing and if I change uh, the controller name uh, I think it won't work let's try hmm, yeah, anyway I want I so I didn't uh, okay I have to change this as well Okay, now when we run the application, it, it should uh, throw an error, I think, because this is not one of the default uh, controller name. Okay, so you see uh, it can't be found. So the default naming is important if you are using default uh, routing. Okay, and uh, now it should work. So you see, this is uh, under lecture one dot controllers uh, namespace. Meanwhile, let's continue to our um, uh, project. Okay, so now it is time to compose a weave. Okay. If you have read the previous articles, you should now have a very basic ASP.NET MVC project, capable of outputting a simple, hello world, message. 
This text is generated directly in the controller and returned as plain text to the browser, but obviously that won't be practical for anything other than the most rudimentary tasks. What we want is of course dynamic pages, created with HTML and other web technologies. For that, we need views, which are the visual representation of the model returned by the controller. Okay, this is important. Let's repeat it. For that, we need views, which are the visual representation of the model returned by the controller. Since we have already created a controller, called Home Controller, we're now at the point where we should create a view for it, instead of just returning a piece of text. And as we saw in the previous article, controllers usually live in a folder called Controllers, so we should have a folder called Views, as well. Just right-click the project in the Solution Explorer and select Add to New Folder, just like we did in the previous article. It's also customary to have one folder per controller, so inside the New Views folder, let's create a folder called Home, to contain the views we have for our home controller. With that in place, we are now ready to create a view inside our new folder. Okay, it is a good, it is a good practice to follow uh, the uh, common patterns that have been uh, developing by the community. Therefore, I will also uh, follow that pattern. So let's add Weaves folder. Weaves. Then for each weave, I will compose another, uh, for each controller. Uh, Uh, it's also customary to have one folder per controller inside the view folder. Yes, for each controller we should have a, a folder and therefore I will also add another folder inside this as uh, a home. Okay, so this will be for home controller. Then inside it I will add index view. Okay, so let's make it. Let's see this first. You will see a dialog with quite a bit of options. They are all very relevant and we will discuss most of them later in this tutorial, but for now, let's just add a simple view to our project. You can do that by replicating the options I have used from this screenshot. Okay, so let's add our index view, which will be our index page. So I will pick rather view empty and when i click add i think there is a, there will be additional uh, options so it is adding index c c s html is it true razor view yes we are adding razor view not a razor page this is important let's edit Okay, looks like the other options are removed in the uh, version 5. Therefore, we didn't get these uh, options. And okay, we have a, we have, I think, a more emptier page, but it should be same index HTML. So let's copy and paste uh, this into our view. So we have layout set as null and we have some HTML code. This is HTML code if you know. Uh, document type HTML, HTML head. Head is the part where we put uh, metadata uh, about our page. It is not directly displayed to the user and in the body tag we will uh, write our uh, code that's basically just some standard html for a blank document with only a little bit mvc related code in the top based on the razor syntax which we'll get to in one of the upcoming chapters for now just ignore it and work with the html which you hopefully already know and understand okay 
At this point, let's make a small modification to the HTML, to display a greeting to the world, it should of course go between the tags, like this. Okay, this is a simple uh, HTML code, you see there is span, and inside span we are setting the font size to 18 pixel, and we are writing hello, but the MVC will be bold, and world, okay, and anything else. Okay, now we will return view inside our uh, home controller here. So I will comment this and I will return this. Okay, so now it will return this index chstml. But how does it know to return index? Because since this is home controller, it will check first weaves folder by default then it will check home folder by default then inside it it will look index chstml because uh, we are in the index uh, action result as you can see here so it will match this and this and home and home here and weaves folder these are all default paths and uh, naming now let's run it and see whether it is working or not now we are able to as you can see uh, format our uh, returned data to the user with html uh, this is the router page therefore it is cs html okay now you see the page is title it as index when we inspect we can see it inside the head tag you see meta name v port content with h uh, with and title is uh, index and inside the body our span is uh, printed like this it is working as expected uh, if i change it to this and refresh it won't work uh, because it requires me to uh, restart the application however there is a solution for that i believe we will see that as well yeah it requires me to restart the application for the changes to reflect okay let's just continue then we will get that part okay so how does it work uh, let's read it as well Thanks to the default routing mechanisms found in the ASP.NET MVC framework, the root URL is automatically routed to the home controller's index method. Don't worry about routes just yet, we will talk about them soon. With a call to the view method, a number of locations are searched to find a view with a matching name, in this case, project root views name of controller index CSHTML. This view is then interpreted as it may very well contain razor code and then returned as output to the browser. Uh, so as I explain it, uh, this is about default routing mechanism uh, implemented to .NET Core MVC. Uh, therefore, since we have followed the naming pattern, it is able to find uh, the default pages. However, you can also give them custom names. It is possible, of course. Uh, but for now we will continue with this so the summary let's uh, read it we have now successfully combined a controller and a view to generate an actual web page it might still seem like voodoo or black magic but just move on in this tutorial and get a feeling of how it works and how powerful the framework is before trying to fully grasp all the concepts there's a lot more you need to know about views though, to take full advantage of ASP.NET MVC, this was just an introduction, to get you up and running. In an upcoming chapter, we'll dig much deeper into the subject of views. Okay, we are still in getting started uh, section, so let's move to the next article. Okay, creating a model. Okay, so time to compose a model. In the last two articles, we started out by creating a controller and then a view. We combined the two to create a simple HTML-based web page. 
However, at this point, our view might as well have been a flat HTML file, because it didn't do anything other than output basic HTML. The idea behind MVC model view controller, is of course to mix HTML with data generated by the server and this where the model comes into play. In the MVC architecture, the model is generated by the controller and then passed to the view, which outputs the relevant data to the user. As you saw in the previous article, we can do without the model if we don't have any server-generated data for the specific page, but as soon as we do, we'll use a model. Uh, if you are not going to use any uh, server-generated data, then it is best to use static HTML, uh, not having a heavier and complexer programming language. So, uh, therefore, in the Today's applications, uh, almost in all cases, you will need a server generated data, therefore a model. But what does a model look like? Well, that's actually up to you, because a model can be any kind of object found in the framework. It could in fact be a simple number or string, or it could be a complex object instantiated from a class, e.g. a user class which holds information about a user, a guestbook entry item which contains a post to a guestbook or anything else. That also means that your model can be a class you already have, e.g. something that comes from the database, or a class that you create specifically to become a model for one or several views. Okay, uh, time to add a model. Let's add a model to our Hello MVC World project created in the previous article on controllers. For the sake of this example, we will be creating a new model instead of relying something already defined in the project. Just like we usually keep controllers in a folder called controllers and views in a folder called views, we will add a folder called models to the root of our project. So, right-click the project name in the Solution Explorer and select Add to New Folder, just like we did in the previous articles. When you have added the Models folder, it's time to create the actual model. As mentioned, models are just regular classes, so that's what we'll be adding. Okay, so let's compose our uh, directory with Add New Folder Models. And inside that model, uh we will add a model name it as uh movie okay so our example will be movie uh, so you see we are giving a custom name to our model it doesn't have to be a standard name so from here uh, i will click new item and i think we will add it as a regular class Yes, regular class. So I will just add a class and name it as movie. Okay, movie CS is added. You see it is public class movie. Okay, and... Since we will use this class to contain basic information about a movie, in the dialog that pops up simply enter movie.cs as the name of the new class. Visual Studio will create a new, empty class for you, which should look like this. Okay, so you see here, hello MVC world.models, it is their namespace. This is the namespace that is defined when you compose your project. Our namespace is lecture one, as you can see. And then we will add two uh, public uh, properties. And sitting title and daytime release date. These are properties, not fields. If you wonder what are the difference between fields and properties, you can watch my advanced programming uh, uh, course lectures. Now our model class is ready. As we talked about, the model should be instantiated by the controller, so let's head over to the home controller we created in a previous article. It previously just returned a view from the index method like this. Okay, so this is what we have currently, and now we will modify it into this. So let's go to our home controller. I will command this and paste this one. 
so what this is going to do is so you see under under na uh, models namespace i will compose an instance of movie here i make the defin definition here and i initiate initialize it here with new keyword this is regular c sharp syntax nothing different i set the title and i set the release date and i return again view but inside that view i return a uh, an object uh, you can only return single uh, model to your view therefore if you want to return multiple classes then you need to expand your movie class into a parent of multiple classes and then you would be returning multiple classes in, in a one return so you cannot write here a chain of different uh, objects or such where uh, we can only have empty you see i am currently showing the method overloads of view method uh, it can return object model currently what we are doing it can return a string view name name of the view by default it will be index view because it is under index method and then uh, it it can return the model and index view name so it will return movie uh, right now and the our object model but we are not done yet let's continue we did two changes we instantiated a new movie object with one of most critically acclaimed movies in the world and then we passed this object to the view method this will make sure that our model is available in our view remember the view we created in the previous article called index cshtml time to open it up again and have a look okay this is an important sentence let's read it again his will make sure that our model is available in our view so to access our model in our view we have to return it okay we have to first initialize it and then we have to return it because this is an uh, instance based uh, class as previously mentioned a view can work without a model just fine but when we want to actually use a model we need to make the view aware of this and tell it which type we expect the model to be this is done with the razor at model directive usually in the top of the view file like this okay so uh, our uh, razor page cannot just know what will it get therefore we define our model like this with model uh, keyword here this is a special keyword it starts with add character then you see currently it is giving me an error because my namespace is different it is lecture one and inside lecture one namespace under models uh, class or folder rather than not class but folder i uh, link it to the movie class okay so this is the model of this razor page right now you cannot define two models three models or more models but you can define one or no models uh, i mean you cannot define more than one model inside a single razor page uh, we have to define this because it is a runtime thing and when it returns at the runtime it is the way it knows the model okay now our view knows that it should expect a model of the type movie which gives you at least two advantages if a wrong type of model is accidentally passed to the view an error will be raised and also visual studio will be able to help you with intellisense when you use the model in the view so let's do that okay so this is a really important part we, now that we have defined it intellisense will help us to use it so in the title i will use the title uh property of the uh model with model dot title so now you see i am able to access model object inside this uh view with at model keywords and its public parameters public properties or fields with that way 
So you see how clean code it is. It is extremely clean, well structured, easy to understand and easy to write. This is combination of server side coding and HTML coding right now what we are doing and with an extremely clean and structured way. Writing a clean code and easy to understand code is extremely important part of being a good software engineer. Okay. And then uh, we will change uh, the printed message like this. Remove it the model dot title. I am able to use it as I want. Uh, was release it at model dot release date to long date string. This is a, this is a method extension of date time. Uh, I, I we can say that a struct date time was struct if I remember correctly. Yes, it's a struct. I remember it correctly. And I can I am calling to long date string extension of my release date. So let's run the application and see what it prints on the screen. And meanwhile, it's running. Let's read it. Notice how I reference the keyword model several times in the markup now. This gives me direct access to the model we passed into the view, in this case the instance of the movie class. That means that I can use properties from it, e.g. the title and the release date properties. Time to test our work, press F5 to run the project and hopefully you should be met with the information about the Godfather. Okay, this is also important. You may also have noticed that I prefix the model keyword with the at, at character, e.g. at model.title. This is all part of the razor syntax, which we'll talk much more about in an upcoming chapter. Okay, let's read it. Okay, now our title is The Godfather and the printed message is The, God, the movie got, The Godfather was released Friday, March 14, 72. So this is uh, the long date in my system culture which is english us i can also change it to uh i think turkish culture let's see if it does support no it doesn't support it and so i can also format this as i want such as let's see let me show the span style equal to uh, font size 25 pixel and color is like this something and then I will end the span here by the way uh, you should not do this inline styling it is not the preferred way but just for right now I am showing we will use proper CSS and other formatting let's just use this way first then I will show you the way of CSS formatting. Okay, now it is styled as I wanted. Okay, let's continue to our uh, tutorial. Okay, so we have passed uh, the chapter introduction uh, the chapter introduction the chapter getting started now we are in the uh, razor chapter we will start razor chapter uh, it has been over one hour so let's uh, write so far what we have seen lecture one context okay so in uh, let's copy paste from here Okay, and
controllers and let's continue okay these are important things to know okay and then this was an important part of the lecture and okay okay now don't need this let's try it Okay. Maybe Ed is a better word. There is a page, yeah, I think we can call it that way. Okay, I think uh, this is a razor view. Yeah. Okay, this is what we have seen so far. Uh, use it okay so let's continue with introduction to razor pages so we are under the razor category chapter and we start with introduction When Microsoft first created the ASP.NET MVC framework, it used Web Forms pages to display content. However, Web Forms wasn't as flexible as people were used to from other MVC frameworks, it had too much overhead in the form of view state, server controls etc. Therefore, Microsoft decided to implement a much simpler and more lightweight language, View Engine for the MVC framework. They called it Razor and it was released in January 2011, as a part of ASP.NET MVC version 3. So you see how late the Razor's uh, engine were implemented in MVC framework. It is done in uh, 2011 with the version 3. Now we are in the version 5. Razor allows you to write in various dialects, based on your favorite .NET language. In this tutorial, we will be focusing on the C Sharp version of Razor, but you can use Razor with VB.NET as well. I will check something first versions. Okay. Yeah, we are inside the MVC version 5.2 with uh, .NET Core version 5. Okay. But where they be other versions? Let's check the Wikipedia. And we see, okay, we are in the core. Oh, 
in the core we are still at mvc version 3.101 but if this is this page up to date okay this is dotnet we are in the dotnet core oh say so they have used the different versioning numbers yeah now it is dotnet 5 dotnet core therefore this is not a versioning anymore okay let's continue all right why use razor why use razor the biggest advantage of the Razor is the fact that you can mix client-side markup HTML with server-side code e.g. c -sharp or vb.net without having to explicitly jump in and out of the two syntax types. For instance, consider this example of a page in asp.net web forms. Okay, so this is what I was talking. You can mix client-side markup with a very awesome uh, clearness. So this is an example from uh, asp.net web forms you had to use these markup tags each time you were using a, a server side object server side feature and it it was really uh, confusing i will compose a web form project to show you how messy it was We won't be using this project, but I was I just want to illustrate you uh, how it was being displayed. So I'm going to pick sp.net core web application again. Okay, it can be I will pick a random folder documents perhaps. Okay. And then uh, I will pick .NET Framework, .NET Core Web Application, not Model Web Controllers. Oh, this is not a web form. This is still Razor Pages. Oh, I can I can click. Sorry, I will compose another project. Let's compose a new project. I think for web forms I have to pick another thing. Okay, let's just remove, close this project. Okay, here web form when I type. Okay, it is called as ASP.NET Web Application. This is Web Forms. Next. Okay, you see I am able to pick the .NET Framework version. It is latest is .NET Framework version 4.8. I am not sure they may have uh, ended the development. So Web Forms don't need HTTPS. Okay, so this won't be an empty project. Therefore, I will be able to show you uh the difference okay meanwhile let's continue uh, so this was the sign text of uh, web forms we had to use these opening tags and closing tags wherever we want to access uh, server side controls and it was really making it messy believe me okay here there are some pages let's see whether they have used it or not you see at the top you had to use some definitions like this Okay, there isn't any. Okay, here, for example, for the accessing title, 
parameter from the page that title you have to open it and close it like this everywhere everywhere you are you are using okay so i can cut this and paste it here it could work like this and in the razor we just uh, write it like this so i will put a uh, new line here you see i'm able to access name uh, object uh, name model or yeah name model and the current date like this however we don't have a name definition right now maybe we can define it in the code somewhere mm. yeah it is defined like this so you see currently we don't have something as name i will open a server tag here like this and i will define a uh, string uh, as name equal to now it should become available yes now it is available as you can see it is so clean uh, and easy to understand you see the difference okay and now i can run the application so this is the difference and let's continue now obviously this basic example doesn't save you a ton of keystrokes but in the long run this makes it a lot easier and much faster to build your pages and combine markup with code this becomes more obvious when you want to do something slightly more advanced like making a conditional statement in your view okay yes uh, it is so true on the conditional statements it is much harder for example you see i open it i close it the if then i type it i open i close again then i open and i close again it becomes much more uh, messier uh, as you write a more complex code i know from my uh, web-based game development however in razor it is much uh, cleaner and easier like this so you see inside the server tag opening we are still able to write html code with html markup uh, currently it doesn't uh, uh, it tells me that i don't have request in my uh, razor view i think to be able to have requests i have to define it in my uh, server side tag as Uh, it is probably inside HTTP currently. Okay, I request perhaps, or maybe we can just directly access it like this. Maybe something like this. Okay, it tells that you cannot test it like this. Interesting. Let's find a proper example of this.
Yes, it is. Okay, uh, if it's ambiguous or present type of string, but there's a no. Maybe this. What is this thing for yours? Okay, I think you can use it like this, and then uh, request dot query. Yeah. Okay, so let's run it and test it. However, I wonder if this will throw an exception or not, since we are not providing a query as test query parameter. So you see uh, some examples of um, this tutorial might be outdated or whatever the tutorial you find on the internet. Therefore, you may be needed to spend some time uh, to find it, to find the correct syntax. Uh, okay, now I am waiting for my application to start. This may have a built-in null check. I'm not sure. Yeah, this has a built-in null check. Therefore, uh, it is null right now. Oh, it is not null. So what is the value? Hmm. So I have to check it as not equal to, rather than not equal to, I have to check as length bigger than zero. So this should be a better okay so this if will not be parsed by default right now because the length should be zero i think uh, this has a built-in uh, null handling it doesn't show the errors yeah Okay, so you see it didn't enter inside this if because the length is zero. However, I can now add test equal to, uh, let's write out oh, some test. Okay, now we can see it. You see, lots of markup here, test value is of some test and even more here. When I change it to something else, it won't work because it will be expecting. So you see how clear the code is and i can also say that from my experience dotnet core is better handling at null values okay so it takes your uh, it makes your job even easier than a regular dotnet framework okay now let's continue to next let's see our duration okay it is already one uh, and half hour
ok so uh, just write first page So basic razor syntax. Let's read it. In this chapter, we will look at all the basic principles of the razor syntax. The most basic thing you can do with the razor syntax is to access something from the server side by prefixing a variable or function name with an at at character. We saw a couple of examples of this in the previous chapter, where we can simply mix HTML, text, and server side variables all together like this. Yes, we have seen it. The above expression outputs text, mixed with the name variable, has to be declared elsewhere, and then it access the current date from the now property of the datetime struct, and thanks to the simple syntax, the code is actually quite easy to read. Uh, this is true. By the way, we are able to access date time because it's a struct. Therefore, you don't have to define it anywhere. Uh, it is a framework, um, let's say framework feature. However, for name parameter, I have to define it elsewhere, which I do in the code here. Okay. So let's continue. But the at prefix is not just for accessing simple variables or properties on a class. It's used for pretty much anything in Razor, including inline control statements, code blocks, comments and much more, as you will see in the following examples. So the uh, key character of Razor pages is at. And it was uh, this one in the web forms. Okay lesser than and percent and greater than and percent and greater than and let's continue html encoding this is important uh, really important you should be aware that the when you use the implicit razor expression syntax shown above the output will be automatically html encoded this is usually the behavior you want but in some cases you want to be able to output html and have it interpreted by the browser instead of rendered as output for this you can use the raw method on the html class and here's an example where you can see the difference okay so this is a good uh, thing to show uh, if you don't encode your output uh, that would make your application vulnerable to xss attacks uh in our uh, lecture uh, i have explained it uh, with details in our uh, security of information uh, uh, course here you can find its uh, playlist security of information systems if you watch these uh, lectures you will understand what i mean uh, XSS attacks, cross-site scripting attacks is very dangerous uh, therefore the encoding is important if you are displaying a client input on another client screen you should encode it properly or you have to be sure that it is sanitized sanitizing is not the best protection or it must be a controlled uh input so here the hello world as you can see it is uh, it has html tags it could have script tags as well and the first one will print it as like this exactly and the second one will show it as a uh, bolt and will not show the html uh, tags uh, let me run the application I will show also the script version as well. And by the way, this is a great uh, playlist uh, series. You should watch the security of information 
Actually, you should get that uh, course in your uh, uh, last year. And if you are not a student of Toros University, you can watch it. Okay, so the first one is encoded. Therefore, it is written as a text. No matter what the, uh, let's say, hacker puts inside that message, it will be printed as a text. So let me show uh, what I mean. I am adding a script like this. This could be a malicious script as well, which would hack your computer. Alert, uh, you are hacked. Okay. So you will see the difference. Uh, in the first case, it will be printed as raw tech. Uh, it will be printed as a secret, uh, secret uh, string. However, the HTML raw will print it as exactly as it is an HTML code. And we will see the alert message. Okay. When the page is rendered. You see, you are hacked. And the other one is scripted as a string. So this is what is about HTML raw and uh, by default encoding. Okay, or let's say how uh, input is encoded. Okay, this is a better definition. Let's continue. Yeah, we have seen it. So, explicit expressions. In the first example above, we used a so-called implicit expression, but some situations calls for a more explicit variant, to show the parser exactly what your intentions are. Razor comes with an explicit expression syntax for just those situations and basically it's all about wrapping your expression with a set of parentheses. This makes it easier for the parser to understand what you're doing, and allows for stuff like calculations and modifications inside of a Razor expression. Here's an example. Okay, so we have a, a name parameter. We already have it here. I won't uh, define it again. So name, substring, first uh, from beginning zero index and four characters. And then it will print your age and like this. This was impossible uh, in web forms, writing code like this. You had to use uh all opening and closing uh server side parsing notice the syntax where the at character is followed by a set of surrounding parentheses we use it two times first to access the substring method on the string variable and then to do a piece of very simple math directly inside the razor expression the resulting output looks like this hello john your age is 42. Okay, so in this case, I will just get this uh, six characters, my first name. And I will type my root age like this. Okay. Okay, so my age is displayed and my name is displayed as well. Actually, I am about to be uh, 34. So let's write something uh, like this plus 5 plus 3 plus 4 plus 4 and 5. Okay. So you can, I can write anything inside these parentheses and it will understand that expression. Okay. And let's continue. Uh, this is explicit expressions. Uh, 
I think I will name as view not page. Okay. Multi statement razor blocks. If you need to do more than simply accessing e.g. a variable, Razor allows you to enter a dedicated, multi-line code block by entering a start curly bracket after the at operator. Here's an example. Uh, this is also another great, great uh, feature of uh, Razor pages, Razor syntax. So you see inside here, I am defining whatever I want and then I can access it like this simply. So we make some math operation, we define some string and then we compose some string like this. Then I can uh, write encoded uh, text variable like this. So let's run the application to see. By the way, when you are watching uh, this lecture, please just don't copy paste my code. Write it yourself because with writing yourself you will understand it uh, much better okay so you see text tell the word the result is uh, 42 then we didn't put any new line therefore it is written like this hello word the result is 42 hello word the result is 42 okay i could also write something like this let me show you so here uh, I will make like this. The result is sum plus i and not n. n is not a valid uh, HTML, uh, let's say, new line. You have to type it like this. Okay, now, however, uh, this won't be printed as a new line because we are using encoded uh so let me let me show you what i mean currently it will be printed as encoded therefore we will see it as a br tag break uh, tag okay it is like this because it is encoded then uh, i will convert it to html raw like this and now you will see the difference okay okay now it is uh, printed as i wanted with new lines increasing each time with uh, one and such i could write anything i want okay and let's continue notice how i can write regular c sharp code inside the code block including loops conditional statements and everything else that you're used to from the c sharp language one important difference though is that you have to have curly braces around your control statements inside of code blocks even if they only span one line otherwise you will confuse the parser also notice how i can define a variable inside the code block modify it if needed and then use it outside of the code block okay so this is multi statement razor blocks and okay and now this is another great feature html tags and plain text inside code blocks uh, there were no such feature in web forms this is a razor uh, feature so when you're inside a code block like shown in the example above you may still need to output text in fact that's quite normal but instead of forcing you in and out of code blocks, Razor allows you to mix in HTML tags directly in your code blocks, like this. Uh, this is an awesome feature. Let's uh, test it. So you see, I am inside a code block. However, I am able to uh, 
uh, write the noun uh, HTML uh, tags as well, such as P, or it could be a div as well. So you see, it's automatically uh, different uh, colored. By the way, uh, it says that it is assigned, but never use it. And uh, I can simply use it like this as well. Uh, let me show you. Uh, like here. So this will be printed. And this is defined here. And this is a markup having text. It is awesome. Believe me, it is awesome. Uh, it is much cleaner and easier code. Uh, razor syntax is much better than the uh, traditional ASP.NET uh, web form syntax. Razor simply sees your HTML tags and then assumes that you're now giving it markup for output instead of code for processing. But what if you don't want to wrap your text inside of tags? Razor has an option for doing this as well using the at operator. So you see, it is printed. This is a tag with plain text and markup inside it. This is a code block. Okay, it is working. And then uh, we can use this as well. Uh, what does this mean? Is uh, this is plain text? Okay, this is plain text inside a uh, code block. Because you cannot write a plain text inside code block. This is invalid. Uh, let's because it is expecting a variable. When I run it, I will get an error. You will see. Okay. So let's comment it out. For commenting, uh, let's use. Okay. Uh, You cannot type plain text uh, inside code block. So how can I write? I can write a plain text like this. This is the single line plain text. And then I can also write multi-line plain text like this. With covering it uh, text uh, block. You see? Multiple lines. Uh, this will break it because it is just only covering single line. Okay, this is not getting comment out. Okay, so you see if I am going to comment inside this part, I have to use this. Otherwise, it is not working. Okay. All right. Okay. When we run it, we will see it. By the way, if you do multiple lines like this, I think it won't will uh, parse it as multiple line, but let's check it as well. Probably we need to put a BR tag, new line tag. Yeah, it is still a, sim a single line and prevent it. We can put BR tag like this. It should work, I think. Let's try it. You see, it is automatically understanding that you are using an HTML tag inside text and parses it that way. It is awesome. Let's see it. Yes, now it's multi-line. Okay, and let's continue. Razor server side comments. Sometimes you may want to leave comments in your code or comment out lines of code temporarily to test things. Therefore, most programming languages include a syntax for commenting your code and so does Razor. You could just use HTML comments, but as we all know, these are rendered to the browser and can therefore be seen if the view source option is used. 
Razor comments on the other hand are never rendered to the browser but simply ignored when the page is parsed. Here's an example on how you can have a Razor comment in your views. So I think this is also not shown but not sure. Let's check it from the source. And yes, this is also rendered as a server side comment. So it is not uh, parsed in the browser. So this is also another server side comment. Inside Razor, you can use regular comment system as well. Okay, let's write them like this and like this. Oh, we are still inside of a server tag, so I will write it like this. Okay. Okay, so uh, we have seen uh, the basic, ra basic razor syntax as well. So I will write it as a comment here. Okay, so you see it is an invalid way of comment right now because we are not inside a server tag. Therefore, I will comment it out. Uh, like this okay i think for today it is enough uh, please do everything i did uh, with the same order meanwhile watching you can pause it if you have any questions best way is uh, content contacting me through our um, uh, discord channel i will show that right now so these are discord channel link uh, you can click and join it if you didn't join the from previous uh, semester you see we have already 70 members and after you have joined it currently i will be using browser but you can use discord application as well and meanwhile let me write another thing okay uh, you have to pick a role uh, currently there is a general channel which is available to everyone and you you should read the uh, uh, Hoş I mean the crawler rules uh, channel and uh, for selecting uh, a course uh, which is this course currently I will just click 8 Okay, it, uh, it didn't work. Why? Hmm. It is not working. Okay, we will fix it, but it is not a problem. Uh, when I click this, okay, none of them works. Maybe my account is broken hmm. okay i will check and fix this uh, uh, but you should join our uh, discord channel i will be leaving this is my dummy account not real account and let's upload our code to our github repository so let's check why you should also learn how to use a code management system such as GitHub and Git Bash. Okay, uh, basically Git itself. Uh, so it says that you have lecture one, but it is not edited yet. So let's edit. Then let's uh, write our commit uh, name. So lecture one final code. And let's push it to our GitHub repository. Okay, when I refresh it, it should arrive. You see, lecture one has arrived already. Uh, however, I will make a name change. So let's make it like lectures and put this inside lectures folder. Okay, 
so now it is changed as you can see so i will add and if so it will move object from lecture one into the lectures folder okay it's updated uh, with code management you can see every version so there are six command commits and when i click this you can see that version so this is the previous version you see it is like this i can fully see it and this is the latest version so this is the of sums of code management i can see every version of the repository like this okay and i think this is enough for today end of lecture uh, hopefully see you next week feel free to ask me any questions